Hi, in this video we're going to have a look at setting up and using an Android emulator uh, within Visual Studio. So it's the type of thing we'll, we'll want to do uh, by way of testing out the, the apps that we're creating. It's, it's useful by way of some quick development in terms of just seeing how things go. Ultimately, it's a little bit limited and ultimately you'll suppose you'll want to deploy to an actual um, device particularly whenever the game uh, starts developing, whenever you're looking at input, and particularly multi-touch input. Having it emulated is not the fastest thing in the world and it's certainly not the most convenient thing in the world to provide input to. Uh, so ultimately, I suppose you want a degree of migration onto an actual device. Now, that might be your own phone, could be your own tablet. We have a number of tablets you can hire if you uh, want to get access to a device. But we'll start off first of all, we'll, we'll look at the process of emulation, we'll look at some of the tools that come along with it, we'll look at Logcat and other related activities. And this, this will apply to the emulator and also to actual devices. So let's um, start off first of all, and uh, we're assuming we're in uh, Android Studio, and we want to create a, a virtual device. Now the place we go to for all of these things is under Tools, Android, AVD, so Android Virtual Device Manager. And if we click on this, we'll get a, a list of all of the devices that we have created. So I've I created one here already. I'm just going to delete it. And uh, it'll bring us back then to, if, if you like, the environment when it's just been created and we don't have any devices available. So you can see here, uh, we've been asked or given an option to create a virtual device. So we'll click on this. And we then get a dialogue that pops up that asks us what type of device we want to create. And this could be anything, for example, under, say, the Android TV category. Uh, could do a, a, you know, I want to develop an app that runs in a TV. To Android Wear, the different styles of screens you have for that. To, to phones, and for all of these here, they give you a list of either, uh, well, Google Android phones or, or some sort of generic ones, and likewise for tablets. If you were feeling you were developing for some specific device, you could say, give me a new hardware profile uh, and then spec up exactly what the device is like. But we'll, we'll use a Nexus 7 tablet. Um, so seven inch tab, this particular resolution, you get the pixel density on the screen. So having selected this, I then do next. And it's gonna bring me to an important screen that is asking me, what version of Android do I want to run on this device that I'm creating? And you can see there's a few areas here in bold and there's a few uh, gray and italics with download next to them. So the minute I've, I've Marshmallow installed and I've KitKat installed, so that's API 19 to 23. Uh, there's a useful down towards the, the bottom right, an API distribution chart. So if we click on this, it'll tell us It'll give you a snapshot, and again, depending on when you click on this, you'll, you'll probably get different figures overall of just how versions of Android are distributed. So for example, KitKat, uh, 104.4, or API 19, uh, it runs on roughly three quarters of devices. If you were doing something like Marshmallow, that's only 5% of devices. If you're going back to Ice Cream Sandwich or Jelly Bean, um, you're up to about 95%, so you, you can choose your, your device uh, and your, your target API uh, based on, on the segment you're going for. And it gives you a useful breakdown of, of what is provided in each of these different ones. So I'm, I'm gonna create it with Marshmallow uh, running a 64-bit uh, x86 Intel processors. And if we then do next at this point, we get another screen, you can give it a name, um, you can specify, if you wanna scale it, so in terms of, for example, that four device independent pixels on the device map onto one pixel on the screen. So, so you can have a different sizes on the screen. Uh, the default is one to one. So if I'm creating, in this case here, 1200 by 1920 um, tablet, it'll occupy that amount of real space on the screen. But um, yes, fair enough, it depends, but you can, you can go wherever you want to. Orientation, this is starting orientation, go for landscape. Uh, graphics, now, Normally keep it in auto. If you've got a decent video card, it's going to be hardware accelerated and I'll make all the difference to it. 
There are some advanced settings. You can get down to specifying the amount of memory or heap and things that are available, but generally speaking, the, the default stuff is fine. So we're happy with what we got, we click on finish, and it will then actually build up uh, an Android virtual device, in this case, Nexus 7 running Marshmallow, and that's available for us. Now we can, we can actually run this device. You, you can edit it, clicking on the pencil, we run here and click, you know, some information down at the bottom, starting the Android virtual device. It's basically going to, to create that then and make the device uh, appear. So do an Android emulator. Um, now I did one-to-one, -one, so it is a, it's a full screen device. And effectively what we're seeing here is the boot up screen. We've created an Android device and it's booting up in the same way if you turned on your Android uh, device that you have yourself. And here we've got stock Android, so we've got sort of the stock Android symbol overall. Now, it'll not take a second to boot up. But whilst you're doing this here, if you if you have a phone, um, and ultimately a phone's the type of thing you want to do, you have to, if you want to deploy your Android apps onto the phone, you have to enable developer mode on the phone. So easy way to do this here, whenever in your phone, um, it'll be within the settings that you have on your phone. Uh, normally it's about device, and you're looking down somewhere under um, about device, in this case, I'm going to software info, where you're finding the build number. So somewhere within your about device, you find build number. If you click on that, it's a total of seven times, that, yeah, believe it or not, that will actually enable the developer mode on the device. So it's kind of a hidden feature. Uh, whenever you click on it a number of times, you'll then have the developer mode. It means when you're plugging your device in, the USB cable to the computer, it'll appear under one of your Android devices. You'll be able to deploy your apps to it and be able to test your apps out on it. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's under the developer mode, but be careful because you can make a good job of messing up your phone if you're not uh, overly careful. So back to this one here, you can see that it started up. In fact, we've got the, the sort of the welcome screen. Um, I can actually make this a bit smaller. We can rotate it, uh, and it is the same as having an Android app in terms of being able to, to use the different features uh, available within it. But that emulates it. Okay, so given this now, we want to have a look at actually deploying something um, to it. Um, when we start this up, we can just leave it running in the background. Effectively, it's a device that is running. It's fairly memory hungry. That's one of the things, and if you're, you're finding that you're emulating this on say a laptop with four gigs of memory which is a you know fairly tight and your emulator is using up two gigs and android studio is using up a fair amount you can run out of memory quite quickly in those instances you may actually want to reduce the footprint down give it a, a gig of ram um, there's also a few other emulators available out there that have a sort of more compact memory footprint you could use those too Right, anyway, we've got it up, we've got it running. It's what we want to test things on. So anytime we go into our Android Studio then, and I do run, it's going to show me uh, select deployment target. So this will list all of the Android devices that it has access to. Um, so it sees in this case here the emulator I've created. If I plug my phone in, my phone would have been listed there as well. So, and if I didn't have one, I'd be the option then to create a new emulator. But this one's running, it's available, it's been detected by Android Studio, so I can do OK. And you have a bunch of stuff down at the bottom um, as the, the app then is compiled, built, and then pushed out to that Android device. So effectively, at this point, we have it running on the, the device. And we can click on the different bits, and we can um, actually run our app on the device. Now there's a couple of, th th that's good, so let's just test it. There's a couple of useful things then, because we're looking at development, we w there'll be some errors, there'll be some challenges along the way, and we want to get information about how it's running on that device. And there's lots of different things we can do for that, so I want to just to flag up a few of them here. Um, good window to have a look at, it's down at the bottom, we've got the Android monitor. So anything that displays up here is going to be an Android monitor. And we can use this here for displaying messages. It's in what's known as Logcat. So Logcat's going to become our friend because if we're wanting to, to put in debug messages or 
information that lets us understand how the program's ongoing. Now, we can use the debugger, we can look at that as well, but occasionally we want to log things out into this window. There's also a bunch of monitors, and if we click on the monitors, it gives us real-time information about the, the app, including uh, the memory, the CPU load, in any network stuff, we're not using it here, and any GPU loading on it as well. So inside this one here, as, as you go around the, the different things, uh, you'll get live information about how it, is, how it is running. So you can see from turning, changing the different screens there, I had a bump up in the amount of memory I was allocating. Um, there's not much GPU usage in this, so effectively, that shall build time for each frame. You can see here 24 milliseconds up to 33 milliseconds. So the green line, we're basically hitting a nice solid 50 odd frames a second. The actual uh, amount of time you it takes is down at the bottom, and you can see there's a few pieces of information about what's occupying the time. Now, that's useful as the app increases, as you do more sophisticated graphical things. There's nothing really sophisticated graphically in this example here, but you'll be able to use that there to track to see where you're putting the load on your particular program um, in, in terms of, of, of where it's been busy, where it's been occupied. So that's that's useful real-time information. Uh, just to show you, if I quit out of this here, we'll have a look at the, the Logcat. So Logcat is good for displaying information. So if I were to, um, let's, let's add, let's add a, let's say, space demo, why not? Player spaceship. Right, so this is the player spaceship, which is the thing I control. And down here, I could log out some information. So log.d for debug, uh, let's call it gauge info. That's the tag that appears, and I can search based on the tag. And I can say my speed is equal to, uh, so it's going to be the velocity uh, length. So if I save this, uh, and again, for, for, for any log information, it will appear, um, you can import the thing in at the top, and if it's not appeared, then it can automatically port it in as well for that one. Okay, so we'll run this, deploy it to our device, go back to our device, and we see again, startup information, if I go in here, player ship. Now, as it moves, you can actually get to see the, the speed that it's moving with down here. And as it goes faster, then the speed goes up. So it's, it's a useful way of being able to log out uh, information and get a bit of content on, on what we're having uh, happen within the game. A few other things there, because depending on the amount of stuff that you have, you can get a lot, a lot of stuff being logged. You can control just errors. You can search for certain keywords. Um, again, you can select what app or what process is displaying messages out, depending on what exactly you want to, uh, to tap into. Now, a few other things that I want to, to, to mention. Um, so let's assume that you want to communicate or share with me how your app's getting on, and maybe you have some strange graphical characteristic or tweak. In the past, I've had people take a picture from their phone and send it to me. Uh, there's an easier way of doing it. You'll notice over here, down um, in the Android monitor at the bottom, you've got a screen capture and a screen record. Now, screen capture, I'm suggesting, if I click this, it will actually take a dump of the, the screen. Uh, so anything that's on the actual Android app will be captured at that point in time, and you can send me in that picture if you want to, for me to have a look at some graphical aspect of it. You can also record it, uh, but you're gonna have more trouble sharing that with me because it'll be a fair old size, but if, you, if there is something, you can record that, you can bring it along up to about three odd minutes. So you have good ways of being able to, to get real-time information, to get things logged out, and to capture information on the, the device. So, so feel free to, to make use of that. One other final thing, if you are, and depending on the features that you put into the game, you'll find that there's a whole bunch of settings that you have available um, for your device. So you could change the, the battery level, you could change the battery status, you could simulate a, a phone call going into the device, a whole host of things. So it is quite a, a, a capable tool overall available for you to, to use. Um, for the emulator, 
when it's up and it's running, you can just leave it running in the background. You can make your changes, you can deploy out to it, and it'll keep on going. So it is quite a useful setup. But as mentioned, ultimately, particularly whenever your game gets more sophisticated, you'll want to move more towards an actual real Android device.